Good morning. Welcome to Microconic Theory 2. We will begin microeconomic theory to by types of market. There are a lot of types of market. First, perfect competition. Second, monopoly market. Third, duopoly market. Fourth, oligopoly market. And fifth, monopolistic competition. Let's go to see those types of market. Please enjoy. In principle, market is a place where people meet to buy and sell things. When we talk about things, they can be products or services. In brief, market is a place where demand meets supply. There are five types of market. Perfect competition, monopoly, duopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic competition. To classify the types of market, we have to look at their characteristics of market. There are five characteristics that we have to consider. First, number of seller and buyer Second, the characteristic of product. Third, the characteristic of knowledge. Fourth, the condition upon entry and exit. And fifth, the mobility of resources. When we combine the times of market with their characteristics, we begin with perfect competition. In perfect competition, there are many sellers and many buyers. Their products are identical. Sellers and buyers have perfect knowledge. And the conditions of the market allow free entry and free exit. Moreover, there is perfect mobility of resources. You may think, how many is many? The word many means very, very much a lot, many, many. For example, it can be compared to number of stars in the sky and sand grains on seashore. So many is huge, many is a lot, many is many many. Many sailors cannot influence other sellers for the price. There is no influencers in the market. And buyers. There are also no influencers in the market as well. Both sellers and buyers are small and they have no influence at all. For the product, the word identical means exactly the same. 
not just similar but exactly the same for all dimensions of the product this is identical if the color is different or the size is different they are not identical they may look similar but not identical when we talk about identical product all the products must be exactly the same for the knowledge perfect knowledge means sellers and buyers know everything in everywhere and every price buyers know who sell things and where they sell and at what price they sell it means that you know everything of everyone in every place free entry and free exit it means that you can come inside the market at any time as you wish and you can go out of the market at any time as you wish too there is no barrier to entry to prevent you to come inside the market and there is no barrier to exit to prevent you to go away from the market for perfect mobility of resources it means that resources can be moved from place to place without border without any barriers without prevention without prohibitions or regulation that do not allow them to cross from one place to another place this condition makes sure that the production is no limit or no limitation of production because when resources can be moved from one place to another place so there's no limitation of production let's move to monopoly in contrast to perfect competition monopoly has only one seller and there are barriers to entry that one seller can stay in the market because the firm has barriers to entry the barriers to entry can be a large amount of capital needed to do that kind of business or an advanced technology that the firm just knows only by itself that no one knows or there are some authorities granted to that firm to operate just only one firm in the market or the seller may have some influences that prevent other sellers to come inside the market these are barriers to entry when a seller can be a monopoly in a market that is the best in the business view because it can set monopoly price that is higher than the price in perfect competition so the monopoly gets the monopoly profit that is an excess profit beyond the normal profit 
that can be achieved in the perfect competition. When a seller is in monopoly, then it is very advantage to that seller. But first of all, that seller must create the barriers to entry to prevent other sellers to come inside the market. Now, another seller can come into the market and the market has two sellers, just only two of them. It transforms from monopoly to duopoly. When everything are the same, when barriers to entry still exist, but another firm can overcome the barrier and come inside the industry. Now two tigers are in the same market and the competition will be very very strong because one seller would like to drive another seller out of the business or out of the market. The condition of the market is not advantage to the seller who used to be the monopoly anymore because now the competition calls for many things that the sellers may not want to do for example cutting prices or spending a huge amount of advertisement that costs a lot for the business so in duopoly you can expect a strong competition between sellers. Now, the barriers to entry seems to be weakened when more firms can come inside the market. Not many sellers can do so, but some of them. When there are more than two sellers, we call it oligopoly. In oligopoly, the competition may be very, very strong, or they can cooperate. When they think that they may suffer from competition, they may think that they better cooperate and occupy all the market together. That may be the case of oligopoly. You can see that in duopoly, competition cannot be avoided. But in oligopoly, you may think of cooperation instead of competition. Here, it is monopolistic competition. It is a solution of perfect competition. When there are many sellers and many buyers, but instead of selling identical product or exactly the same product, you differentiate your product to make your product different from other sellers. Because the differentiated product. They may be similar but have some kinds of differences. Design, shapes, signs or more functions that attracts people to like your products more than other products of other sellers. You can see that in monopolistic competition, the entry is free and the exit is also free. The conditions are the same as in perfect competition, but just only the characteristic of the product 
is different. It is the solution to avoid receiving just solely normal profit in perfect competition because a seller in monopolistic competition occupying a small portion of the market that belongs to that firm only. It means that by the differentiated product, the customers are loyal to that product. Even though it is a niche market or a small group of customers who like that product a lot and don't move to other brands or don't move to other sellers. When they created a differentiated product, they create brand. So people or customers are loyal to brand. The brand loyalty is the heart of monopolistic competition and the seller occupying a small portion of market and act like a monopoly in that small portion of the market. So it comes to the name of the market, monopolistic competition. You, it means that among the competition, you have monopoly power in a small portion because you create the differentiated product to attract a small group of customers to be loyal to your product. Those are characteristics and times of market. Now, let's take a look in the real world. I will bring you to a street trip to look at businesses alongside the streets and we will ask in what kind of market are these businesses and you will find something very interesting. Follow me. So let's go to Kesa. First of all now we see that we have a spa there. So what kind of market a spa is in? Here, we are garden. Another kind of market or the same type of market, you think? And you see a restaurant. Whoa, looks delicious, very good. There are a lot of restaurants in Chiang Mai and of course many of them offer special things that are different from each other. Then what do you think? Also, on the right hand side you see that uh, that is a store digital store selling many things especially electric appliance and a very special thing in Thailand that is stops for Buddhism you see that the Thai people respect Buddhas a lot and we have many many things to pay respect to Buddhas and here what are the type of market this merchant in and the pawn shop is the pawn shop another market if it is yes then what kind of market the pawn shop is in very interesting Look, we have the firefighter office over here. Does the firefighter offer goods or services to people? Can we consider that firefighting is in a market? 
that is sold to public interest and gain from taxation that we have paid to the government what do you think Thai traditional medicine center so this center offers health service what do you think is this center in a kind of market or separate from any kind of market you see many products are on the road cars motorcycles those producers of cars and motorcycles are in markets as well not only cars and motorcycles you see tuk tuk the tricycles that is very unique in thailand tuk tuk has its market considering motorcycles we have many many types of motorcycles in thailand and brands the difference is at the brand so brands differentiate the products or services from the competitors on the billboard the orange billboard it is curry express Do you have experience in using Curry Express? That's the logistic company. And for sure, it competes with our other logistic companies. And what kind of markets are those logistic companies in? Very interesting. Identical product. What does identical mean? You consider cars on the road are they identical this one and that red one and that white one and this black one are they identical identical means that exactly the same so if it is exactly the same it is identical but if it is not exactly the same it is not identical So if I uh, ask you how much is the stuff that you are seeing on the screen then can you identify the price of this product if you don't know you don't have perfect knowledge free entry and free exit what does it mean it means that you can come inside and you can go out at any time for example on this road if you see that all the cars can come inside and can go out at any time this is free entry and free exit but if something block the cars not to come in and not to go out we call it the barriers to entry or barriers to exit but here you see that all the cars and all the motorcycles can come inside here and then pass by exit the road perfect mobility of resources what does it mean it means that this canal cannot obstruct people from crossing from this border to that border for example if this canal separate two countries men can cross the border freely from this side of the canal to those sides of the canal without any harms or dangers or military services waiting there to arrest you no free mobility of resources means that you can send everything from this side 
of river or of this side of canal to another side of the canal freely without regulation is this true for everything that you see in this world today you may see that in the European Union when people can move from one country to another country without borders that one kind of perfect mobility but just in that area not all over the world here are another example that is very interesting hotels and this is like boutique hotel is the hotel in monopoly market or perfect competition market or other kinds of market for example duopoly oligopoly and monopolistic competition you see another building this is for insurance and what is the market for the insurance and here you see Chiang Mai Panda hostel so we have hotel boutique hotel and then another hostel so what kind of market is for the hostel so very interesting you see that on the streets you can find a lot of businesses and vendors and merchants that is classified in uh, many different kinds of market you see here your information and souvenir shop and here translation service you see massage oh with the price high massage food oil food and bag we have promotion and the bell and here motorcycle rental so what kind of markets are they in and here coffee Bang Khon coffee Arabica 100% so what do you think what is the market for it and here the clinic for eyes surgery another small restaurant here a la carte restaurant another building built for a hotel very beautiful and here tour information again and motorbike for rent again so are there a lot of sellers in the market so motorbike rental is in perfect competition isn't it and here self-service laundry what do you think a monopoly over here or perfect competition very interesting and here salon guest house many things that uh, they offer to customers and you see police service is police service a monopoly service that's provided by only the government do we have another choice for police i don't think so and you see we have here drugstore the pharmacy and dental clinic in an area can be considered that a monopoly and interesting this is a temple buddhist temple Can we consider Buddhist temple in a market or institution that is not related to market as well? Have a nice day hostel, another hostel. So we see that a lot of hostel here, and if it is com can, uh, if it can be compared to traditional hotel, then maybe they are in perfect competition. And now you see Chiang Mai Thai Massage Guest House again. Oh, 
Oh, bit the prices. You can see that the prices cannot be very different from other vendors or other service providers because if the price are very different then the customers may compare the prices and choose the best offers and here the pharmacy again then when we think that the last drug stores that uh, we have found uh, can be a monopoly but now it is not anymore because we have the pharmacy over here and we have many many things over here oh red tuk tuk e-taxi they are very interesting so it is not just only tuk tuk or taxi but e-taxi what does it mean so here house of wolves record very interesting food and drink I think when we're trying to understand the types of markets then we have to broaden our visions to see many many things in reality in the real world now the villa again you see that many people offers many things to customers they compete if they don't compete at all they are in monopoly but when they compete to many many sellers then probably they are in perfect competition here you see TOT public phone very interesting is there any other vendor providing public phone like TOT or TOT is just only one provider that provide public phone if it is the case then TOT is a monopoly in providing public phone very interesting it is very interesting that a simple business for example the parking lot can be a monopoly when they occupy a special location in business district and set up the business parking lot for businessmen or who come to do businesses in this district so you see that it can be costly for the businessmen to come to park in this area because the monopoly price for the parking lot may be extremely high you see that we have small vendors with motorcycles here selling papaya salad fresh and very skillful they are, must be very delicious this is small vendors that you can see along the roadside and they may look similar but not the same you will see that this vendor offers drinks beverage and here another kind of um, desert And here, sauté, sausage, and food. Although they look similar in the signs, but the product that they offer are different. So, do they think they compete to each other? Or, in some sense, they compete for money from customer's pocket, but not directly because they don't sell the same thing and now let's see about the gas station 
we have many brands of gas station for this sample this is PTT so PTT is the biggest gas station in Thailand not only PTT in this market but many other brands you can find Esso you can find Shell and you can find Caltex in Malaysia you will also find Petronas and you can see that Cafe Maison is in this gas station probably a monopoly in this area but of course there is not just only Cafe Maison in the beverage industry let's take a look closer to Cafe Amazon over here so you see that Cafe Amazon is not just only one beverage brand in Thailand but it can be a monopoly in the sense that it occupies the space in the gas station and in the biggest gas station so just only one cafe over here so what do you think Cafe Maison is monopoly or in perfect competition or duopoly or oligopoly or monopolistic competition very interesting and now let's turn to 7-eleven 7-eleven is another example that is very classic in the past there are 7-eleven and AM PM AMPM is another convenience store but AMPM went out from the business as 7-Eleven grows up a lot and occupying the spaces in the market or in other words the market share of the market and you see that when we think of buying something we think of 7-Eleven You may think that 7-Eleven is a monopoly in convenience store but you are wrong because we have other brands for example Family Mart and Lawson so we cannot apply the antitrust law to 7-Eleven because there are other brands in convenience store Fight so you see that in this gas station we have at least three sellers that can be samples about the classification of the markets over here the grab service is very interesting so you see that grab service is coming very shortly yeah right before the covid 19 situation but uh, people love it and grab is growing very fast with a unique service that deliver food to your house and not only food grab offers many um, services like taxi both the car taxi and motorcycle taxi and del delivery of products as well so Grab is another service that uh, you may think of the market and for sure we have Food Panda and Lyman and many other brands that can compete with Grab so today we discuss a lot about the types of market and why we think that a vendor or a shop or a seller is in that kind of market and not another kind probably one thing that is critical is the competition if there is no competition at all then we may think that the seller is in the monopoly market but when the competition is perfect many many of sellers and vendors then it can be considered that 
they are in perfect competition but one thing that we have to be careful is that in perfect competition there must be just only one product and that product must be identical which means the product must be exactly the same however many products are different when sellers create differentiation in their products make their products different from each other then we may consider that they are in monopolistic competition which means they have monopoly power in their own market it may be a small portion of the large markets but it is occupied by that seller just only one seller in that small portion of the market that seller has the monopoly power in that market because the differentiation of the product that they create very interesting that is the monopolistic competition however if the product is the same and there are just two vendors in the marketplace we call it the duopoly market just only two vendors in the market so you can think that they compete very fierce or compete very very hard to each other to be the last one by the rule of last man standing it is hard for two competitors to cooperate but easier to compete and compete with any cost that's very interesting but if they compete to each other but more than two competitors in the market for example three or four competitors but compete with just solely one identical product we call it the oligopoly market so the difference between oligopoly and duopoly is at the number of competitors if two it is duopoly and if more than two it's oligopoly very interesting about the markets we will dig deeper in this course and i'm sure that you will be enjoyed by the subject of microeconomic theory too You see that theory and practical may be extremely different and theory may not suit the practical perfectly many things that we can have an idea from the theory but cannot apply directly to the real situation or the real world we have to think about it twice about the conditions that we can apply the theory and we must think about the heart of the theory or the principles that the theory tells us and choose something that is critical for that theory to apply to the real world or to reality and not all of them for example if you think about perfect competition we can see that there is no place that suit perfectly to the perfect competition when we see that there must be five characteristics of perfect competition the first one many sellers and many buyers and the number of sellers must be like numbers of stars in the sky or numbers of sand grains on the seashore there are not many vendors like that and the second one the identical product can we find 
exactly the same product that two vendors offer at the same time very hard to fight I guide you through the street and we couldn't find exactly the same product it can be similar but not identical not exactly the same and the third characteristics of perfect competition the perfect knowledge I ask you do you know everything of every vendor and at every price? I don't think that anyone on earth can do that. So perfect knowledge is far from reality. We may have many information, big data, but not all the data and not all the knowledge, not all the information. And fourth, free entry and free exit. Sometimes different vendors, different with each other in the terms of capital they have, in terms of technology they have and skills. So I don't think that in a market that everyone I emphasize that everyone can enter that kind of market for example we see that many massage here and many restaurants here even though small size of restaurants but do you think I can go into that kind of market for restaurant I cannot cook well so if I open the restaurant, then I go bankruptcy. <laughs> so, something that looks easy and looks like it is the perfect competition. But for me, I have no skill in cooking. Therefore, I cannot enter that kind of market. And the last characteristics of perfect competition the perfect mobility of resources is far and far from reality people dream about it but now you cannot go across border without visa it's hard to find the conditions that satisfy all the five characteristics of perfect competition now we turn into monopoly market do you think we have a real monopoly in reality do you think just only one person or one business or one firm can sell just only one thing at one time I think it is easier to find in the market than fighting perfect competition but now people know the, the technology People have money. People can enter the industry whenever they are ready with their money in the pocket to invest and ready for the technology that they can acquire from many sources on the internet or from the partners or from learning from anywhere. Buying them, for example. Then if there is monopoly market available on earth it is very fragile very sensitive because other people can come in at any time it is a trade that other firms can enter the market at any time then think of Duopoly market. Duopoly market just two firms competing. That may be in case, but um, not many cases. Oligopoly may be the case, but oligopoly compete just with identical product. But you see that many, many vendors or sellers offer differentiated products that their brands or the varieties of products and services that they are offering are different 
So when they are not identical, we cannot consider them in the oligopoly market, but probably in monopolistic competition. However, if we treat all of them in monopolistic competition, we are still wrong because the assumptions of the characteristics of monopolistic competition is there are many sellers and many buyers in the monopolistic competition. But what we have seen is a few sellers offering differentiated products. So it is a mix between oligopoly and monopolistic competition. So what should we call that kind of market? Therefore, the theory does not fit the reality perfectly. Then we need to leave a room for applying the theory to reality and not restrict ourselves to just the theory. That's the heart of microeconomic theory too. Now, let's turn back to the classroom. You can see from reality that the theory does not fit the reality perfectly. Main observations that you saw from the street are not aligned with the theory. You may have questions that are doubtful. For example, is there any product on earth really identical? When we talk about perfect competition, duopoly and oligopoly, we talk about identical product, which is exactly the same. In reality, can you find any product that are really identical or exactly the same? I think it's hard to find that. But there may be something. Second, when we talk about monopoly, in which area a firm can occupy a monopoly power? Can be a small area or must be in a country or must be in a world? So, can a business be a monopoly in an area? This is an interesting question. Third, in monopolistic competition, firms offer differentiated products, but the characteristics of that monopolistic competition must have many firms, many means, number of stars in the sky. But when you look at reality, they offer differentiated products, but there are not many of the firms. What do you think? These businesses are in monopolistic competition or in perfect competition or in oligopoly? What should be the right type of market they are in? And fourth, we saw many government agencies and temples. Can there be sellers in the market? Or we can ignore them from the market? Very interesting questions. Therefore, it has to be very careful to identify the type of market for business. Because the theory does not fit perfectly to reality. Theory, therefore, may guide us what we should think about the market. It is just only a guideline, but not govern all dimensions of reality. Theory is impossible to govern all the dimensions of reality. In summary, today we have learned that market is a place where demand meets supply. 
and we have five types of market and they are classified by characteristics we have also learned that theory does not fit perfectly to the real world and identification of the type of market for a business must be very careful To make sure that you understand all the contents today, please answer these questions. There are some review questions here. You have to answer. What is market? What are five types of market? What are characteristics of each market? And what can be observed from reality that does not fit the theory? I have an assignment for you. You choose a business of your choice. Then you classify the type of market of that business. After that, you discuss whether the theory fits the reality of that business. And please, show your analysis to one of your classmates or your friends. And then learn from his or her analysis too. You discuss together and you will find interesting dimensions of the theory and reality. That's all for the class today. I hope you enjoyed the class and see you in next class.